Hey y'all, today I'm going to be sharing with you my most worn items of makeup from this year, this weird year, 2020. I went through my vanity and I pulled the pieces of makeup that I believe I actually wore the most in the year of 2020. So it's not the things that excited me the most, it's not the things that were like the freshest or the things that I remember. I, this was actually what I found out as I was going through. There are a number of things that I saw on my vanity that are like the hallmarks of 2020 for me and makeup. Things that are the specialist things that I acquired this year or that I was the most excited to acquire this year or that I talked about the most on, on my channel. But those things didn't make it into this video unless they were the items of makeup that I believe I wore the most number of times. That's what I'm gonna be sharing with you. If this is your first time to my channel, hi, welcome. I'm so glad that you clicked on this video. My name is Hannah and I really love beautiful things. So I review them on my channel. I review beauty products and other beautiful things and I talk about my love for them. But I don't wanna be an out of control overspender. So there's an undercurrent of awareness about that here on my channel. And one of the ways that I keep an eye on myself in that vein is to pay attention to what I actually do use. Pay attention to the difference between my expectation for a product and the reality of how I use that product. So this kind of video is the kind of video that I like to do to just level the playing field, gather the real information, and then I can use that information going forward to make better spending decisions in the future. If this kind of thing sounds good to you, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel right now. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. There are two things that I wanna say before we get into the meat of the meat of the video. They're both about my makeup advent calendar. My makeup advent calendar is another project that I'm doing right now to kind of reconnect with my actual feelings and my actual experiences with my actual makeup. So my friend Julia filled an empty advent calendar with makeup that I already own, makeup from my vanity. And that means that when I was going through my vanity and trying to identify the makeup that I wore the most this year, there were some things missing. There's some stuff in the advent calendars. There might be something, I don't know what's in the advent calendars. There might be something in there that I wore a ton this year that I'm totally forgetting about because I didn't see it when I was going through my vanity. And there is something that I wore a ton this year that I was looking for that I couldn't find and thereby learned that it is probably in the makeup advent calendar. I'm just absolutely sure that it is because it's missing from its spot. And I'll talk about that when we get to it. So there's one thing that I was able to include in the video, even though I don't have the physical item here, um, but there might be, there was only one and there might be something else. So forgive me if I omit something and I hope that the little piece of makeup will forgive me if I omit something because it's in the advent calendar. The other thing I wanna say about the makeup advent calendar is that, you know, I open one drawer a day and the idea is that every day I have to wear the makeup that was in that drawer. So today it was the Gucci Lip Wall, which I have been missing. I noticed that it was gone and I love that. I feel like it's great. If I love something enough and I want to reach for it enough that I notice its absence when it's in the advent calendar, that's ideal. That really tells me something about my relationship with that item of makeup. So I'm pleased to be reunited with this. I was waiting for it. That said, should we start with lips? I feel like there's a clear front runner. I mean, I don't just feel. I, I tend to say that I feel things even when they're facts. Not all feelings are facts, we know that, but some of what I call feelings are actually facts. This is facts, facts on the ground. This is the item of makeup for the lips that I wore the most this year. These are the two, they're two, um, two colors of one thing. It's the Glossier Vanillic Lip. So I have the shades Pony and Disco. These are the two that I originally got to test this formula. And I love the formula so much and I ended up wearing these so, so, so much that I actually got a couple more colors. So this is unusual for me. I usually just pick one of a formula, like my favorite color and the color that I feel like is the best for me in that formula. I don't usually have like the collect them all mentality about formulas. Pony and Disco remain my most reached for shades, partly because they're the first ones that I had. So I had more opportunity to use them this year. But I think also they're just the, the two colors that are really the best for me and the most wearable for me. Probably if I had to pick one, it would be Pony because it's more neutral and it's a little bit lighter in color. So it's easier to kind of blend it in with other makeup looks and it's easier to wear on a no makeup makeup day. But I've gotten a lot of wear out of Disco as well. It's definitely my most worn red this year. And what was interesting about this is that when I went to look this, I was like looking at my lipsticks where I keep my lipsticks and I was like, oh, definitely the lipstick that I've worn the most this year is the Glossier. And then 
I was looking in my lip glosses, like the area where I keep my lip glosses. And I was like, what's the, what are the lip glosses that I wore? Is there a lip gloss that I wore the most this year? And I couldn't find one. I wore my lip glosses plenty, but none of them stood out to me as being one that got like a ton of wear this year. And the reason for that is that this is a, a kind of lip glossy formula. I feel like I appreciated a juicy lip this year and I often didn't want a totally matte lip. So I feel like there are a lot of times, maybe even the majority of times that I went in to apply a lip product, I was looking for something that would be reflective of light and that would give my lips some moisture, basically a lip gloss. And I feel like almost every time that I was looking for that, I ended up settling on these because they have that lovely, almost semi-sheer color and they give the finish that is the finish that I'm always looking for when I go in looking for a lip gloss. So no lip gloss has made it into this video and it's because the lipstick that's in the video is this lipstick. I feel like that should tell you everything you need to know about this lipstick. I really surprised myself by loving the applicator. Pony is obviously the paler color here and Disco is the terracotta. And they have this like, fuzzy applicator and I didn't try this for like over a year after it launched because I thought that I would hate the applicator for sure. I felt like it would be messy, but in fact, it's really, really easy to use and I love the way it distributes the product and I, I actually think that they nailed it in absolutely every way. The smart thing for me to do with this information would be to use it to keep myself from buying, or in my case, keeping, because um, one of the things that I also have to decide about in terms of not acquiring too much stuff is whether to keep stuff that comes to me in PR. It's not only a question of what I buy, it's also a question of what I keep. So the smart thing for me to do would be to remember this, in future when I'm trying to decide if I want to buy a new lip product or if I'm trying to decide if I want to keep a lip product, either that was sent to me for free or that I purchased for review for my channel. And I am going to try to do that going forward because I, I've i used these the most of any lip product this year and my love of them hasn't tapered off. The thing that I've been using on my lips that provides me something that these can't provide, it's kind of a category, although I do have a specific winner in the category, but. Oh, actually, this is something else that I think might be in the advent calendar. So there are actually two things that I've realized might be in there. Um, but it's lip it's um lip liners with a little bit of a cool toned, or definitely at least at the very least a brown leaning nude quality. So the ones that I've been using the absolute most for the entire year are the two LA Girl Perfect Precision lip liners that I have, and I could only find one of them. Now the other one could be around somewhere because I use them very, very frequently, and it's the kind of thing that often falls on the floor or gets like left in a little box, and then I just lose track of it for a little while. So the one that I have here is Sugar and Spice. The other one is Cafe. I think Sugar and Spice is a little bit more pink leaning brown and cafe is a little bit more brown leaning brown and maybe even a little bit more warm toned. And I use them both constantly. I use them interchangeably as like a, a, my, a slightly grungy my lips, but better. And I don't just wear them as lip liners. I wear them all over the lips. I wear them as like a complete lip color. So for the whole year, if you're looking at the whole year, those are my two most worn lip liners and some of my most worn lip products. But lately, a new classic has entered my collection. It's M Cosmetics Mink. It's the soft blur lip liner. And I've used this maybe more than any other lip product. Again, lipstick or lip liner since it arrived because I use it all over my lips. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put it, I'll line my lips with mink, I'll put it all over my lips, and then I'll use a slightly glossy product like Glossier Pony. I've done that a number of times just to blend it and blur it together and make it a little bit meatier of a presence on my lips. Uh, but ultimately the lip color that I'm wearing just is mink, the lip liner. So I included this partly because I couldn't find the other one of the LA Girl, and also because I've worn it so much in the last couple months of the year that I feel like I can confidently say that it is one of my most worn lip liners of the year. Uh, of the three, if you put the three together, it's probably gotten the least wear because it's newer, but I just, I feel like it counts. And I also feel like something that I started doing this year is overlining my lips a little bit more than I used to with a soft, blurry, again, sort of like slightly brown or slightly cool toned my lips, but better liner. And that 
kind of product is the kind that has gotten the most wear. So this is like an example of that, even though it's newer to my collection. There's Mink, it's the Twist Up, that's the M Cosmetics, and there's Sugar and Spice, it's the one that you sharpen. In the swatches, you can see the difference a little bit better. That's Sugar and Spice on top and Mink on bottom. Sugar and Spice is obviously got more pink in it. So that's it for lips. I would say I have enjoyed accenting my lips this year. Uh, I think partly because of the weird year it's been. There have been a lot of days when I didn't want to do much on my eyes, some days when I didn't feel like doing much at all. And I feel like in those cases, accenting the lips is like the easiest way to put yourself together a little bit. So I have leaned into doing that this year, but I've been hard pressed to do the most on my lips. So I've been hard pressed to use like a really matte lip, a really sharp lip line. And I feel like that's why these have been my most worn products because they do accent the lips, overlining a little bit, doing a little bit of a grungy, bold, but neutral lip giving something that has a little bit of color, a little bit of pop, but doing it in a way that's easy to wear and that's comfortable, that's what I've been doing. The Gucci lip wall, the one that I have on today, would absolutely fall into that category if it weren't so red, like if it weren't so statement in terms of color. And that's one of the reasons that I've had a little bit of like a more neutral or easy to wear color of this product on my wish list for a really long time. Every time I think of it though, I remember the vanillic lips because I feel like that's what they are, just in a slightly different format. Why my hair won't be flat? Why? Why? It's like this part that's puffing up. When I move it over, it just puffs up on the other side. Should we talk about eyes? I feel like we should talk about eyeshadow now because the last category is cheeks and that reminds me to say <laughs> something I should have said at the very beginning of the video, which is that this is just color cosmetics. So I'm not including base products and that's partly because I wear the same base products all the time. And it's also because you already know what they are if you follow me because every time I talk about base makeup or every time I apply it on camera, I use the same products, just green Sephora, bright, bright future color corrector, Erin's Faces concealer, and Makeup Forever concealer, and then in my NARS Soft Matte, the same four products. So it's just like a little bit of different consistencies and colors of concealer and a green color corrector every single time. And of course I've used them the most this year. I also excluded mascara, eyebrow pencil, things that are just like what I use to do the basic structure of my face, like just to get it together every time. I didn't include those things in this video. These are just color cosmetics. I'll have put that in the title. I think I'm gonna put that in the title so that you'll know hopefully already when you click on this because <laughs> I forgot to say it in the intro. But basically all that's left are eyes and cheeks. We're just doing lips, cheeks, and eyes. And I feel like cheeks is kind of like the category that has the most surprises in it and maybe the one that we're the most on tenterhooks about, so that's why I'm gonna save it for last. Eyes, it's, it's interesting, it's interesting. I feel like I've really settled into something this year in terms of my preferences for my eyeshadow collection and my preferences for doing my eye makeup. And what I've settled into is singles. Maybe this comes as no surprise to a lot of you, but um, I brought out a number of palettes to use to show you, to demonstrate to you what I'm talking about here. Um, this is my one of my just beloved, maybe my most beloved uh, magnetic palettes. I love that it's square, and I love it so much that even though I have plenty of magnetic palettes, and I sometimes even get some in PR, I sometimes get them from Adept, and I love the Adept palettes. So I really, really love those palettes. Even though that's true, when this broke, when the mirror on this broke, I just covered it over with duct tape and I kept using it because I love this square pan and I love how like big and hefty and solid it is. I just absolutely love this magnetic palette. It's my favorite one to build uh, like my make your own palettes into. I really, really love the format. So this is one that I built with, uh, I did, I filmed myself making this palette, this custom palette a couple of months ago, like quite a while back it was before we even moved. So it was before August, it was a long time ago. It was like significantly earlier in the year. And you know, I've taken some shades out of here by now and some from here, I've been like moving things around, uh, but this is emblematic of the kind of thing that I've been doing. Sitting down, rearranging my singles, building a palette and then using that palette, I just use, I continue to use this. When I sit down to do my eye makeup, I frequently still open this and reach for it. This now semi dismantled and slightly chaotic 
palette that I built for myself out of my singles, I would rather reach for this than any of my pre-made palettes. And I've been doing that over and over again. There's this little one that I made um, just like last month or maybe a little bit over a month ago. I made this one because I've been wanting to do neutral eyes and I, I had been sort of tempted by little eyeshadow palettes that were coming out on the market that just had a variety of basic neutrals for a really pretty eye. And I just wanted to build it myself to have it so that I could just grab it. And again, I, almost every time I've done my eyeshadow since I built this, I've like grabbed for it just to use one of them in conjunction maybe with this pre-made palette. I mean, this self-made palette. Uh, but also sometimes just doing a whole eye look from it. I've constantly reached for this bronze. I'm constantly just reaching for a bronze and putting it all over my lids and then using like a little bit of black and a little bit of shimmer and that's what's in here. So this has just been my go-to for doing my eyeshadow. I have definitely, definitely reached for little palettes like this of singles way more than any other palettes for the whole year. But I decided to bring my Natasha Denona, my two big Natasha Denona palettes out here because when I say that I'm using my singles and then I'm building palettes out of my singles to be inspired by, what I mean is <laughs> that there are half Natasha Denona shadows. Like my, when I make a palette out of singles, I always go into these big Natasha Denona palettes and pull shadows from them. So this, these eyeshadows in the gold palette, which I've had now for almost exactly two years because it was a Christmas present from my sister at the beginning of 2019, these eyeshadows are some of my most used, the ones that are gone and the ones that are here because I, I've you know taken all of them out and put them back in several times over, over the course of the year. So technically the gold palette eyeshadows are some of my most used, eye makeup of the year. I just haven't been using them in the palette. I never open this palette and use the palette. I always use these shadows in my magnetic palettes. And the same is true of the Lila palette, which was a gift from my friend Lauren from the uh, YouTube channel, Lauren May Beauty. She bought it for herself. She didn't end up loving it. And she gave it to me a while back. These shadows as well, I've been taking out, putting back in, taking out, putting back in over and over and over again all year. And I've used a lot of these shadows a lot. I just haven't used the Lila palette as such, right? And the reason that there are a bunch missing from here is because they are in here. They're like the, all these square shadows down here are Natasha Denona and it's a mix of the gold palette shadows and the, the Lila shadows. So I do really love these big beefy Natasha Denona palettes. I love the eyeshadows that are in them. One of the things that's really interesting about working with those shadows this way, taking them out and then using them in magnetic palettes so that I don't really know what they are when I'm using them. So these, I feel like I have a very visual spatial memory and way of thinking. So when I open a palette that I know really well, I, I think of the shadow as being like, it's that red in the upper left-hand corner of such and such a palette, or it's that blue in the bottom row of the other such and such a palette. I like think of them in terms of the way that they live in the palettes. But these eyeshadows right here, because they've been out of the gold palette for so long and they've just been floating, I don't think of them that way. I open this up and I'm like, oh, it's a dark brown. It's an Natasha Denona dark brown. But I don't really think of the gold palette and I don't think of it by name and I don't think of it by its position in that palette. It's just the color that's here right now that's gonna work for me and a formula that's gonna work for me. And I feel like by taking them out of their palettes and disconnecting them from their names and their homes and in a way even from their branding i free myself a little bit with the from the obsession with palettes the obsession with like buying and owning pre-made palettes and the color stories in palettes and i feel like that's been happening over the course of this year more and more and i feel like it's just going to continue to happen more and more and i found myself wanting palettes new palettes less and less because i feel like i have endless variety just rearranging not only my singles, but rearranging the, the shadows that I own that are in palettes that are magnetized so that you can rearrange them. And I do get questions sometimes about how I depotted these palettes. They're not depotted. These are magnetic pans and magnetic palettes. So these are designed so that you can pop them out and rearrange them and put them back in. I'm just using the palette the way that it was meant to be used or in one of the ways that it, that it was meant to be used. So pretty much that was my most used eye makeup, but there's one other little item of makeup that's absolutely my most used eye makeup or some of it. 
and that is the Tom Ford Cream and Powder in Naked Bronze, and it's definitely in the advent calendar. I couldn't find it when I looked for it. That, that's the thing that it sits on a little spot in my vanity, and I know exactly where it should be, and the fact that it's not there means that it's definitely in the advent calendar, and I haven't found it yet. I haven't come across it yet, um, but I definitely wanted to put it in this video because I bought it at the end of February with a gift card that my parents gave me for my birthday, so it was a gifted item, but I selected it. And since then I've been using the absolute butt out of it. And I've completely hit pan. I've hit quite a bit of pan in the shadow on the top. And I have used quite a bit of the cream as well. It's not like I'm close to hitting pan because that's a ton of cream shadow in the bottom of that component. But there's definitely damage there. It definitely looks well-worn and well-loved, well-used, even after less than a year, right? I, I acquired it this year. and. I used it the most almost of any eye product, any eyeshadow product this year, maybe even the most compared to even to my singles and my palettes of singles. And it has a lot of really good grunge on it, a lot of use. It's, it's messed up now as we get to the end of the year. And that's what I like to see. I'm really glad that I have forged that relationship with that product and gotten a lot of good use out of it. You know, partly because it was so expensive, but also just because I like to be using the makeup that I love and I like to be able to see the evidence of that use. I wish I could show it to you. If you've never seen it before on camera, you'll just have to take my word, word for it. Um, but I know that a lot of you have already seen it because I've talked about it a lot and shown it on camera a lot. Okay, y'all, it's time to pay the price. It's time to do the cheeks. Ah, uh, I feel like I have two that are really predictable. <laughs> uh, or yeah, two that are pretty predictable and two that might surprise you because they've surprised me a little bit. There's two where it's kind of like, I'm confessing to you that I've been using this makeup like crazy and I haven't really quite come out and said to you, announcement, I've been using this makeup like crazy. So I'm gonna save those two for the second two. And the first two, the really easy ones, this one might be a little bit, little bit less, it, this one might be a little bit surprising because it's more new, right? Where it, a little bit like what was going on with Mink is going on with this because I didn't acquire this until something like August or maybe even September, early September. So I've only had it for a quarter of the year. This is the e.l.f. Active Lip and Cheek Palette. But I've used it so consistently and so much more than any of my other cheek stuff since I acquired it that I think that I can confidently say even statistically, like it's not just the theory of how much I use it and will continue to use it. I actually think even statistically, if you were to tally up on a paper how many times I used this this year, along with how many times I used all my other cheek products, it would be quite close to the top. It would be one of my most used things because I've just been using it constantly. And I do use this a lot when I'm not doing makeup for YouTube, not doing much other makeup. And I'll also use this as a lip product. I'll reach for it just on a normal day and be like, boom, 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 lip and cheek. Sometimes the eye done, feeling kind of glossy. And I've already hit pan on the highlighter. And there are significant dents in the other ones too. It's just so good. I love the tones of the creams. And I love the glossiness of the cheek, glossy without being glittery, without adding texture. It's a really, really pretty wet look shine, but it's a stiff cream, so it doesn't feel that tacky. And it really, really holds its own. It's very lipsticky in terms of its quality, the quality of the pigment, the opacity. It is just a gorgeous formula. I love it so much. And I have used it a lot. But I've been talking about this one a lot recently. Before this, there was this. This is another one, the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand in the shade Spotlight. This is another one that I acquired this year. I bought this with my budget in January and that I've used just to bits. Like it's almost completely gone. Look at that. I've almost completely panned it within the year. And I love that. I love, I feel like it was an excellent buy. I love to have this relationship with something. I love to use it until it's all mucked up and yucky. And I get to the point where I'm thinking that maybe I would replace it if I, uh, if I ran out of it. And you know, it hasn't gotten as much wear over the last couple of months because I've been using this one a lot. And the I, the um, highlighter in this is also really pretty. I don't like the highlighter in the e.l.f. one better than the Charlotte Tilbury. I like the, the Charlotte Tilbury better. It's the best liquid or cream highlighter or powder. It's the best highlighter that I've ever had and I absolutely love it. It's perfection. So it's not like I like it better. It's just that 
This one's so good that when I'm already using this palette for the colors, I'll often just dip into the highlighter as well and instead of reaching for a second product. So um, it's a little bit on the back burner right now because I've been so into the e.l.f. one, but it's not forgotten. And I've absolutely, I used it this year probably more than any cheek product and maybe more than any other product at all. This might be the, the one product that I used the most, that I strayed from the least uh, in terms of color cosmetics over the course of the entire year. And there's the swatch. Look at that glossy shine. This dries down completely, but it retains that glossy shine. And so the fact that it is that glossy and that shiny, but then that it also dries down and still looks like that, that's what makes it so amazing. That's what makes it my like number one pick for the year, basically. So those were the two that might have been easy for you to guess if you know me, if you've been around. And these two, I think, probably would be harder to guess. Yes, this one surprised even me, I feel. It's the Can Make Cream Cheek. So in January, I, I infused my Cream Cheek collection which, with a bunch of new stuff, and this is one of the ones that I bought. I do really like it. The color is really pretty, uh, but the thing that has meant, so I, if you were to tell me to say off the top of my head, like what's, you know, five makeup products that you used a ton this year that you really, really love that you like use the butt out of. I would never have thought of this. I wouldn't have mentioned it. I, with that sight unseen, like not looking at my collection, I wouldn't have mentioned it. But as I was looking through my drawer, looking, looking at all my highlighters and blushes, when my eye landed on this, I was like, I was like, I bet statistically I've worn that way, way a lot, way more than any of the other cream blushes that I bought in January when I did that cream blush haul. And the reason that that is true is it's the formula of this. It's very soft and almost foamy. It feels like a slightly set foamy mousse. And I think that what's going on with this is that sometimes I love a cream cheek, but sometimes I do all my makeup and I'm ready to do a cheek. And then the idea of a cream intimidates me a little bit because when you're pushing a cream into the skin of your cheek, with a brush or with a finger, it can disturb other makeup around it. And sometimes if I've quite done the most, like even with a little powder and like just carefully concealing all of my blemishes, then I'm ready to go in and I want a cream cheek, but I want it to be one that I know is gonna apply like a wisp, like a fog. I know it's just gonna be, I, I know that there's gonna be no trouble and it's just gonna blend and melt completely into the cheeks I, I love a stiff cream, this e.l.f., when I can really go for it and I can really just like press it in and work it around and when I'm doing like an all cream look or I'm really feeling myself or I'm just, when it's like caution to the wind, cream, glossy, glow, 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 I prefer this kind of stiff formula. But when I want a cream cheek, sometimes I would want a cream cheek specifically so that I could blend it with my favorite highlighter, which is a liquid, but I want it to be kind of low impact, like really easy. I always reach for this because the moosiness of it means that it's just soft and and just like, like a cotton cloud on the cheek, but it's cream so it blends. And I just, I find it very user friendly is what I'm trying to say. And so I found myself reaching for it over and over and over again because the color, you know, the color, there's nothing about it that really blows me away. Like I love the colors. I love all three of the colors in the e.l.f. one more than I love this color. I find them to be just a little bit more unique and a little bit more thrilling. This is just like a, a very basic, basic color for like a, a cream cheek, basic color for a cheek for me. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about, right? Look how easily that blended into something kind of semi-sheer, but it's not too silicone-y. It's, it's perfect. It's, it doesn't feel, it feels like a nice, soft, dry, blended, melted into the skin matte. Not too silicone-y, not weird, not gonna pill. It's just, it's perfectly balanced. So when I just want a little cream cheek and I'm like, it doesn't have to be any specific color, it doesn't have to be any specific formula, it doesn't have to be anything, I just want, I just need a cheek to go with this and I don't want it to fight with it and I don't want to fight with it. I don't want to fight with it and I don't want it to fight with my look. I just want it to like be the thing and just be done with it. And that has happened a thousand times and every time it's been this. So I've ended up using this a lot this year. It's definitely one of my most reached for products. And then the other one, the other cheek and the very last product of the, of the video is basically the same thing, but in powder form. So when I have all of the same requirements, I just want something to be neutral to, I don't want to fight with it and I don't want it to fight with what's on my face. 
And I don't, I want it to be glossy or have the option to make it glossy because I don't want to layer a highlighter over top of it because I don't want it to be too makeup-y or cakey or ostentatious. And I want it to be a powder because for some reason a cream isn't feeling like the thing. When it's, when that is my requirement, and that has also happened a thousand times, I almost inevitably reach for the Kevin Aquan bronzer. This is the Neo Bronzer in Sunrise Light. It's just that the color of it is such that it's a blush on me. You can see the pan's kind of a gradient and one side's got some shine and one side is matte. But would you believe me if I told you that this is what I have on my cheeks today? This and only this, no highlighter. This is how glossy it is. And I am wearing a little bit of like an illuminating base underneath. That's like why my whole skin looks kind of illuminated. And I also did spray an illuminating setting spray on. So, you know, I do have some additional illumination, just a little bit, but this, a lot of it's coming, especially right on the cheek there. A lot of it's coming from this product. You can get a really, really beaming, glossy, highlighted cheek look with the glossy side of this product. I have a little bit of it on, on the tip of my nose and it's all the color and all of the contour. It's just this on my cheeks. So because you can get that with it and because you can see the look, it looks like a blush on me, but it's this bronzy neutral blush and it's not fighting with, even though I don't have any eye makeup on except for mascara and I just have this red lip on, it's working. It holds its own with a strong eye look, but it's neutral enough and it's easy enough to wear that it works with a light eye look or with no eye makeup. It's just so versatile. And I, I love that it's like supposed to be a bronzer and that it's light and it's easy to wear. I love how finely milled the Kevin Aquan powders are. This is just one of my, it's not just my most reached for powder cheek from the year. It's one of my most reached for products of the year. Even though I wear cream cheeks so much, I've ended up wearing this more than many of my cream blushes because Sometimes I just want a powder and when I want one, it's almost inevitably this. So this one, the Can Make Cream Cheek, I feel like I didn't even know until today. I didn't even realize because I hadn't really paid close enough attention that I had used it so much this year. But when I really thought about it, you know, I realized that it needed to be in this video. But this one, the Kevin Aquan Bronzer, I have been aware that it's one of my go-to makeup products. If I were to travel or something, you know, I would definitely grab this because I just use it all the time. I use it constantly. Um, and I just don't think that I have really said that. I talked about it a little bit during my cheek product declutter, but I wanted to come on camera and just make it very, very clear that this is like one of my favorite products in my collection. And it's one of the things that I've used the most this year. I use it all the time. If you are a person who checks my description box frequently to see what I'm wearing in any given video, then you probably are one of the people who did know about this because it's in my description box a lot. I, I often wear this on camera. I often grab for it when I wanted to highlight something else, like if I did an elaborate eye look or if I if I was sitting down to do my makeup before filming and I was like, I really wanna wear like a strong grungy lip and that's what I'm gonna build my look around. And I do that and then I get to the cheek and I'm like, what should I use? I need it to be, I need it to look good, but I need it to be neutral and I need it to be glossy and I need it to be a powder. It's always this. So it's in my description box a lot. That's it. That is my most used those are my most used items of color cosmetics. That's my most used makeup in the category of color cosmetics. My most used makeup except for like base products and you know, mascara. And I wanna know what yours are. Let me know, just put like one or two things or the things that surprise you. Like if, if by watching this video, you started thinking about your own makeup collection and then you realize that there's something for you, kind of like the Can Make Cream Cheek where you're like, oh, I don't, it's not my favorite thing. I don't think of it as my favorite thing and, and I wouldn't have thought, but now that I'm actually focusing on the question, I realize that I've worn this like more than almost anything else this year. If there's something like that that surprised you, I would love to know what that is. So I hope that you will consider sharing in the comments, liking this video and all the things YouTubers tell you to do. Uh, but more than any of that, I hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself because that's what will make you the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.